When I ended the unreleased 32X series last year, there were a number of games on my list I was unable to confirm. In researching other projects, I've uncovered sources leading to confirmations for a few of them. Thankfully, a few people who really enjoy the series and work with groups trying to document such games have reached out to me, sending additional information, confirming games, adding new ones, and cleaning up most of the unresolved issues remaining on my list. In fact, we've uncovered enough additional games that it warrants a new episode. Welcome to Unreleased 32X. I'm gonna cover the rules, then jump right into it. The rules for inclusion are simple. There has to be some proof that the game was in development, be it an article in a magazine, a known copy of a prototype, a retail order sheet, an interview with a developer, etc. With that, let's get started. This is Retro Impressions Unreleased 32X. Barkley's Shut Up and Jam is what happens when one company has a breakout hit, in this case, Midway with NBA Jam, and the competition wants to replicate that success. While Barclay Shut Up and Jam didn't see a ton of critical or commercial success, Accolade still held licensing rights to use the Barclay name and thus went to work on part two. The game was intended for release on the Genesis, 32X, and SNES, but only the Genesis version made it into consumers' hands. The crazy bit of this whole situation is while the first game saw worldwide distribution, the sequel was only released in North America. With that in mind, it was shocking to find a review for the 32X release in a Brazilian game magazine. It's impossible to know why it didn't release, but it's well known that Tectoy did hold rights to release games on their own accord, and did so releasing at least one 32X game in Brazil that was not seen in the US. So why the 32X version was reviewed in a Brazilian magazine, though no version of the game ever left North America, and the 32X release ultimately was canned, remains a mystery. Casper follows the very popular 90s trend of licensing questionable movie properties for release as a video game. The game was planned for a ton of systems, though of particular note, not the Genesis. Instead, the 32X version would cover the last generation of Sega platforms. There is not a ton of mystery as to what happened here, as Sega discontinued the 32X in late 95, while Casper the game didn't release until mid-96. If you want to check it out, a version did release on the Saturn, which saw mixed reviews. 1996 saw the release of two Die Hard games, one by Sega that remains critically acclaimed. It even received a sequel under the name Dynamite Cop when Sega couldn't come to terms with Fox to renew the license. The other game was published by Fox and developed by Probe. Die Hard Trilogy was well received, though it had a tumultuous development, with Fox insisting that Probe continue to add more to the game, feeling it needed to contain sequences from the three existing films. This pushed the game's release to 1997, missing the Genesis in 32X by over a year. Fever Pitch Soccer was an association football game by US Gold that had zero team or player licenses. Right before the game shipped in June of 95, they announced a 32X version was in the works. The Genesis release was very well received, so it's a bit of a bummer. The 32X build never made it to store shelves. Kids on Sight was a digital pictures game released under the Sega Club brand, which was specifically meant to target very young kids that also might find interest in properties such as Sesame Street or The Magic School Bus, which also happened to be games that released under this banner. Kids on Sight allowed you to mess around with construction equipment if that was your thing. Digital Pictures released quite a few games for the 32X CD combo, with additional games in their library rumored to be finished and ready for release before the 32X was cancelled. Offworld Interceptor is a vehicle combat game developed for and released on the 3DO in 94. The game would later be ported to the Saturn and PSX under the title Offworld Interceptor Extreme. Prior to the launch of the 32X, a game called Offroad Interceptor was announced for the system. Was it a new game, a sequel, a port with an altered name, or a misprint by the magazine? No one I spoke with seems to know. There are, however, a couple things to note. All versions of Offworld Interceptor that released use the same HUD, so I find it interesting that the HUDs shown in screens for the 32X game are clearly different, though other assets are without a doubt from Offworld Interceptor linking these games. I guess until someone with some knowledge of the project steps forward, that's all we've got.
The 32X received two near-perfect arcade superscalar ports showing just how capable the hardware was in running those games. The man who developed the superscalar technology is Yu Suzuki. It's just not the tech that he's responsible for though. The games he designed that saw release on the 32X include Virtual Fighter, Virtual Racer, Afterburner, and Space Harrier. I've already covered Daytona USA, which is another cancelled 32X game of his, but there are two more that were set for release. Outrun, which to this day remains a very popular racing game, and Power Drift. It's said Outrun for the 32X was Rutubo Games' next project after they finished ports of Space Harrier and Afterburner for the system. They handled the Saturn port included in Sega Ages, so it's assumed that this project was moved there. Power Drift has a bit more interesting story. The arcade game was never distributed outside of Japan, and Sega sold off home rights to Sega consoles to Dempa, who they had a close relationship with and who often ported Sega arcade games to non-Sega platforms. To reiterate, Dempa only purchased the rights to develop a port for Sega home consoles. This might seem odd, but this was the 80s and things weren't always straightforward. Acclaim picked up rights for home computers and Asmeek for the PC Engine. Dempa started development for the Genesis but the port was in production so long, they decided to move it to the Sega CD when that system launched. By the time the 32X released, Sega was finding success releasing ports of their superscalers for the system. Dempa? Well, they had yet to finish their port for the Sega CD, and the contract giving them the right to do so expired before they could finish it. Sega anticipated this and went right to work on a release for the 32X hardware. It really made sense too. The game had never seen release in the US, and it was a kart-based racer in an era where kart racing was all the rage. Both of these games started development near the end of 94, and it's unknown how far they progressed before the 32X was abruptly and unexpectedly terminated by Sega. I've talked about the Striker series before on Unreleased, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again. It was a very popular association football game series during the 90s that appeared on a number of major platforms. Its developer, Rage, confirmed that the game was coming along without issues and confirmed it as being near complete with a mid-95 release planned. Greatly improved graphics and a locked 50 frames per second were boasted as the advantages the 32X version would see in the last update given. The game was anticipated to be a PAL exclusive, why it didn't release is unknown. Rocket Boy is a dog and his boy action adventure by Rocket Science Games. Not much is known about it, though the game had several features in numerous magazines. The original planned release looked to be a Sega CD, 32X CD combination, similar to what was done with Fahrenheit. The game was moved over to the Saturn with the demise of every other Sega system, but it still never released. About half the planned games Rocket Science was developing never shipped, and while there are mixed reasons for why each one was cancelled, the reality is Sega was funding them, and the company was losing money having never produced a hit game. So they started cancelling project after project to move resources over to the game's nearest completion in hopes of having a hit on their hands. Spoiler alert, they didn't. Sonic Sports is one game I desperately wish we knew more about. The article discussing it talked about now-confirmed scavenger projects, which I briefly covered in part 2, along with the also-confirmed pending release of the Neptune. The small article purports to be given an update on the long-awaited Sonic Sports, which is similar to Acme All-Stars, but instead featuring a whole cast of Sega IP. Basketball, volleyball, and soccer were some of the games that would be included. The odd bit is, as far as I'm aware, this is the only mention of this quote-unquote long-awaited game giving me pause as to whether it is indeed real or not. As I stated earlier, everything else mentioned checks out with flying colors, so I have to assume that the writer of this article had access to accurate information regarding these releases. The unfortunate bit is 23 years later, we know nothing else about this game, and as long as Sega remains above water, we most likely never will. The final thing I want to mention is I've seen a lot of people mention this was a scavenger game. That's simply not accurate. Star Control and Sega have an interesting history. The game, which is a space combat sim, was designed for PC, 
ported to the Genesis and released by rogue publisher Accolade without license from Sega. Lawsuits ensued, and after settling matters, Accolade came on board as a licensed publisher for the Genesis. Star Control had proven to be extremely popular, so a sequel was released in 92 that, to this day, is considered one of the greatest games ever made. On a side note, the game's developer, Toys for Bob, is still making games with the entire Skylanders series being their work, and more recently, the remastered Crash Bandicoot and Spyro Trilogy. Anyways, with the release of the 32X, Accolade finally had a home system they were willing to work with other than the 3DO that could handle Star Control 2. The game was announced prior to the system's launch, and its fate remains unknown to this day. They would try one more time with Star Control 3 on the Dreamcast, and again, not ship that game. I heard rumors of wild guns coming to Sega consoles for years and discounted them without regard. After all, the game developer slash publisher Natsumi released games on the Master System, Saturn, and Dreamcast while skipping the Genesis altogether. In November of 95, Natsumi announced they would be bringing support to Sega systems with games releasing in 96 on the Saturn and 32X. The game of note here is Wild Arms, which was the sole game mentioned for the 32X. If Sega could have held on for one additional year, it's almost certain that the definitive version of this game would be on the 32X. Thank you so much for checking out this episode. Your support means the world to me. As always, feel free to leave a positive or negative comment down below. I try to read and reply to everyone and appreciate the opportunity to interact with you all. Until the next episode, to wherever you may be watching, good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm Genovi, and you've been watching Retro Impressions.